Everybody hit their mics now and turn the mics down. Welcome. My name is Dr. Lou Jensen, and this is the INE Network Gathering. We've been doing webinars together for about seven years, and we've gone through so many different formats and struggled with trying to make the computer and the Internet work this way and then work that way, and some advantages and some disadvantages to all of it. But the thing that's so amazing now with what Google Plus has put in place uh, is really becoming a powerful thing. I'm I'm sensing a connection that amongst us is a network that we've never had before. To be able to ask questions and show things and discuss things as we're growing and progressing in our individual studio business careers is to me a powerful advantage. I just wish the world would have had this. Uh, years ago, literally. We've been at it for a long time, nearly 35 years, and so it would really be helpful if we could have gotten it this sooner. I don't know if it ever dawns on you now and again, because the second I launch, I jump on Google Plus just about every morning. I grab the phone, and I'm on Google Plus and checking things out, and Google figures out that we belong together and fills my stream with what you guys are posting very first thing every time, and I'm thinking, here's Google does their thing, but somehow their computerization of all of us is helping them to figure out that we are like-minded. We have things in common. We are a similar kind of a, of a circle. And the, Google, the computers at Google keep track of that for us. And if that's not a strong business element and a strong business idea, I don't know what in the world, how could a business do that for themselves? otherwise. So the, the future business is going to be rather phenomenal. As soon as someone figures out how to make this little box sell on a predictable basis, then things are really going to happen. It's, it's making that transition right now, and I don't think it's fully there yet, but I'm sure having fun playing with it, watching for those ways that will make it actually work. Do any of you ever stop and think what it's going to be in the next few years? When this is, we jumped in here, Google Plus was only a year old when we started. And to think what it will become and how aggressive and fulfilling it will be in the near future as my kids and my grandkids become more adept at using it uh, kind of makes me wish I was a little younger and going to be around to watch a little more of that progress because it's sure changing quickly. It's uh, shifting everything that used to be as far as blogging and website practices that have drawn traffic that way. Now they're becoming kind of a reference spot, but that's about it. All the activity is this social, social media stuff that we're playing with now. So welcome to all of you tonight. we got a full show again, and appreciate all of you taking your time to come and participate and tonight's show is one of my very favorite subjects I really uh, I really enjoy this so oh, I don't want the comment tracker I want the screen share where is that guy Show you my very first slide animation. Nice font. I'm trying to learn some new things and have some fun. Some fun in the process. So we're on slide one. Everybody got that? Can't change the wind, but I can adjust my sails. Yeah. Thanks, Mel. To me. The thing that I am most most pleased with in my own personal life is the period of my life where I tried to find a way to go. I was halfway through my dental career, had a very busy, busy dental practice, and I made a lot of money, but I just hated going to work. 
And a lot of people run into that same brick wall in their individual lifetimes. It's just amazing how hard it is to keep a job and go to a job and keep your bosses happy and make things all work out, <clears throat> pay the bills and pay the taxes and manage for 30, 40 years is quite an issue for most of us. And as you try to find a way to take your ship where you want it to go, to me it's really a challenging really a challenging part of, of being the captain of your own ship because the winds and the troubles and the problems are blowing all the time. There's always something to deal with, always something to struggle with in normal life and living. But to take your life in a particular direction means you've got to somehow find a way over, under, and around and through those storms. And good, good seamen have learned how to navigate. They've learned how to get from where they were to where they're trying to go. And to me, those navigation tactics are a fairly common thread. And yet there's a part of that that seems to be really challenging for most people to kind of get beyond those struggles. And as I've watched the success stories in our circle, the ID network, some have figured out how to do quite well with that, and others still, still really wrestle with the trouble in their life. And I have put down here the three steps, the three parts of what I think are like tools, navigating tools that help us the most. Because once, and this is pretty consistent with what I believe in deeply and how I've tried to live and then what I try to share now is if the dream of where you're headed is strong enough it will literally light that fire deep within you and then no matter what happens you'll keep going and if I can help in that period of time to help someone keep their fire lit and keep their life going and keep rolling in the direction that helps basically take their talent and learn to share it with the world ugh, that's that's just the ace in the whole deck. After that, it does require this persistence thing, this this something about persistence that some people give up really quickly and others just don't no matter what. And so that persistence factor is what I think keeps the dream keeps the persistence going and the persistence keeps the dream going. And then what we've discovered accidentally in the network is that the degree of sharing and caring and mixing with other people who are like-minded, that lifting as we go thing seems to me to be the, the payback. I get quite a few calls in any given year from members who have done something they're really proud of or something that's extremely unique and they've got just such tremendous opportunities and when those kinds of occasions show up, it's such a delight to me to have had a little tiny hand in the beginnings of it. Everyone's done their own amount of work level. There's no way around the work involved in success, and it's definitely uphill. But, oh, my heavens, is it fun to share that mixture with you guys and see you make progress, see you put things together that maybe you hadn't done in the past, and and head toward that dream. It really is a fulfilling process. My hope is that we really will become a discovery talent discovery network. Uh, we've worked in this direction for such a long time and it still is going to require so much more to actually make it uh, something of reasonable reasonable proportions, but I think we've got the beginnings of it. I think we have the nucleus of something that is really, really amazing. Everyone has a talent and a gift, but not everyone ever gets to a point where they get to really go after it, really do something with it. And I think that's what Success Mountain really represents. Uh, the idea that it's uphill, yeah, no, no question. But is it a lot of fun to help someone else see the vision of climbing that same mountain. So the idea of uh, an uplifting network, something that is supportive and encouraging of people and their challenges, 
to me really is why we have the shows. It's why I come and sit down. It's my hope tonight that one thing we talk about here will help keep your fire going, help you work on your dream a little bit more aggressively, and see if we can't help nudge your career and your contribution along a little bit more. If you've got an idea of where you're taking your life, then the dream of where you're headed seems to work better. If you're still kind of all over the place and you don't focus on some theme, you really will generally have an awful lot of trouble with trying to manage it. If you can envision a great sea ship out on the ocean and it's sitting there, there's the wind blowing, but they want to take the ship in a particular direction. The only way to take it in that direction is to adjust the sails. And so if you know how to adjust the angle and the position of the sails, then you can pick up the wind that is blowing and have it work for you instead of work against you. And it really is what I think helps people overcome their individual battles, individual circumstances. I've taught nearly 3,000 in my training course in my uh, week-long travel and train class over my years. And up in that range of people, almost always their individual circumstances are different. So different. And it makes it really challenging to try and coach and advise and help people with ideas of solutions when you're mixed together with a whole bunch of other people who have a different set of problems that they're facing. But from what I've seen and what I've coached, it is really interesting to have people zero in on what is their major problem. Because often we'll pick on things that don't matter so much and we'll leave the biggest problem kind of undone and untouched. And tonight, that's what I really want to kind of talk about. I'd like to ask you and have you think back to yourself how this last year has gone for you. And I'm going to kind of suggest the concept that how last year went is quite likely how this year is going to go as well, or is already going to we We're half, over halfway through already, aren't we? That amazing. But there generally is a, a tendency of how things go or how things continue to go. And the older we get, the more that turns into a rut. That's a habit pattern. It's how we go after problems. It's how we solve problems. It's how we did it last year and we got a similar kind of result. It's how we're doing it this year and we get the similar kind of result. And as we get older, that seems to get more a deeper trench, <laughs> if you will. And I think that should tell you something. If you're on a roll, then she's continue, by all means continue. And then if you measure it down and kind of look just randomly, this, how are your mornings? How do you start each day? How do you react to the mornings? And if you're the kind of person that's ahead of your day, you generally will have a chance to improve your life and living circumstance. If you wake up and you're already behind, or you wake up and all you do that day is walk into whatever storm shows up, you react to just about everything that comes at you on any given day, you're likely to miss a lot, a lot of opportunities doing it that way. So is there a way to kind of maneuver that? Does that kind of give you a little bit of a sense or a little bit of flavor of saying, well, I can see some things that I really need to improve because this is the time now for what I've worked my whole life to be. This is the most productive time. Maybe it is time for a change. And I'm talking about the fundamental changes, not the little, not the little tiny things. When you see something done like this here, this has been blasted, but we could hand engrave it too. You could put a diamond on and touch a stone like this and put some poke some flowers in there and stack them up just like this. 
and turn an ordinary stone, an ordinary rock into a thank you that's going to be around for a long time. And the second people know that you can do this kind of thing and they see it, the public usually reacts. And I could see where even something as simple as this, you could make a whole business out of this. I guess if you got especially a whole pile of rocks in your backyard would really help. But when I see ideas like this, they don't go away. They go into my journal. They go into my life. I capture these thoughts because maybe not with stone, maybe it will be with slabs of glass because I could take three blocks of crystal and blast or etch those and stack those up as well, couldn't I? So you really have ideas that are kind of up in the clouds, thoughts that you've not materialized, thoughts that you haven't brought into reality yet. And if you stay up there forever, then you never get down to the practical part of actually doing some things. And that's the practical doing of things that really start to change the quality of your life you're living. So somebody's got a mic open. Can you check your mics again, everybody? There we go. There we go. So the process of going about your life and your living, I think, is really hard to evaluate yourself. Uh, very difficult. It's easy to see someone else that's wasting a lot of time. It's easy to see somebody that is is all but foolish in some of the actions that they have in their life and living. But uh, from my feeling and my experience in my own life and looking at others, I, I'm the one that doesn't see it as well as I wish I did. And I think we all struggle with that. I think we all wrestle with that just a little bit. When I, uh, when I started building Soulworthy, it was easily one of the more difficult times in my lifetime. And I was at this point well into the project. And Nick stopped by and said hello. And to come and see me in Vernal from any pathway you might be taking to go see your family, Nick, was uh, way out of the way. <laughs> and I don't know if it was worth it much to you, but it sure was to me. And just the fact that that period of time, even though I was wrestling was something I wasn't very confident in really being able to do. I'd never built anything like this in my lifetime. And I had to figure all of these angles and everything out, and try and rough that thing out and put it together. And I ended up actually doing it all myself so that I could have that therapy. And how I went at that was, first of all, to make a decision that I was going to do it. Through the winter time, I started trying to design and fabricate what I thought might actually be be what would be of substance for Soulworthy and how I needed to do the foundation and how I needed to do the floor and then put these raw timber 8 by 8s up on the corners. And then this was the real interesting part was how to put that skylight in the roof and how to make that thing build so that it wouldn't come down. And then I went to the, after the planning and the preparation, then I just went to work. And I'd go out every day, get up and hit it every morning pretty regularly. And by the end of the day, I could see that I'd made some progress. And when I came down to the point where I began to sheet the roof and finish the roof up like this, I was just on cloud nine because it was starting to have some decent substance to it. It was beginning to materialize from a dream up in the clouds to something that started to have some substance. And to me, this is the point where you have to get from the dream to some degree of reality or you'll quit. You just won't stay with it. And when you get to that point, that then the persistence factor starts to take over and say, hey, man, this is just going to be an absolutely perfect place for me. And finish it up. I got my awnings. I sewed the canvas and put up the awnings. 
Did all the metal sheeting, got everything finished with uh, with solar. Now that part of a dream, it was two years to get this project done and get it put into position. But it still gave me more than I invested. And this adjusting of your sales, this making things work out, there is a way of achieving everything. And that pattern of how you're doing things, how you go at accomplishing things, is something you either learn or you haven't learned yet. And to me, the way of achieving is an art. There's an art to it. It's how do I do better art? It's how do I put myself in a position where I actually can progress and make some some things work out? Uh, being crazy doesn't hurt <laughs> because that is how it's done. You have to literally know where you're going, and from then on, you adjust, adjust, adjust to make things work out. Now, most of us in our circle, I'm kind of preaching to the choir a little because we're you guys come and you attend and you participate and you share your feelings and your attitudes about stuff and I know it's encouraging to others who then watch the shows. We've got several brand new people who are sitting over on YouTube and participating right now or will this, this next little while. And that mixture of what you're experiencing and what you're going through is going to help them make those adjustments to try and get things set up in such a way so it will actually work for them is what the whole goal is. And the degree of success that humanity has accomplished all these centuries really relies on the ability of a human being to adapt. To literally take whatever is coming at them and still find a way to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish to me is the whole, the whole deal. From last week's thought and showing you the difference between the words described pretty ordinarily to produce this way is to me got so much sizzle to it. There's such a grand thought going on here when you realize that yeah I got to seize every day and do the best I can with each and every day but there's always an element more to what you're doing that you could put in and plug into it to help make it really work out that way. There really is always room for improvement. So if you could zero in tonight and look at your circumstances after the show tonight and say, what could I next most do <clears throat> that would really help? That would help my dream. What are you most trying to accomplish? And you can see how difficult it becomes if you haven't got that long-term what the other end in mind plan of what you're trying to accomplish. If that's not in place then this process really really suffers and really really struggles. I've had I can't change the wind but I can adjust my sales quote in my life for 40 years. And every time I bump into it, it, it grabs my attention. And I think it's because I probably struggle with this more than anyone. I tend to get my mind made up and my head bent and the way I go and come hell or high water. And that not always, I don't adjust as easily as I perhaps should. And I think that's why the concept keeps coming back to me and coming back to me and coming back to me because if you can't, if you can't correct the, the problems that you've created or the circumstances that you've, you've uh, dealt with along the way, then there isn't enough adjustment. And that adjustment is what we're talking about tonight. Every time we think we've got everything all managed, then all of a sudden something else shows up. And this was on the Google Plus this week and I, I just love the fact that it was think deeply but enough. Speak gently but often enough. Love much. Can't do enough of that one people in your life that have contributed so much to your individual life. When's the last time you expressed that 
enough. Laughed often? I do well with this one. I I just think half of life is nothing but a funny story. <laughs> and so I I enjoy my laughter. I don't mind working hard, but I know there's always more that I could do, and I'm getting a little slower nowadays, and boy, that's frustrating. Give freely. Give freely. Don't think you can do enough in these last two. Give freely and be kind. And then you see another statement that's been around for several thousands of years. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Now isn't it interesting that they had a word called luck that long ago. And this famous old philosopher is noticing the fact that if you're looking at preparation and you're searching for opportunity, these two meet, and that is then called luck. So what I'm talking about tonight is a, is a way or a mechanism to try and make decisions ahead of time so that we're not the result of our circumstances, we're the result of our decisions. Because if you make a decision strong enough, cannot that decision then overpower any circumstance? I get to sit and watch my sister and her husband and struggle with their disabilities, and, and most human beings have no idea how hard it is to manage in any given day with their disabilities. And yet their attitude and their humor and their relationship with each other is easily as good as I've ever been around. It's a little bit like a captain of a ship who has done enough, sailed enough, been out there on the oceans, trade winds and all, long enough to know that when you're sailing, there's times to trim those sails. There's time to adjust the sails to make things work better depending on the conditions that the environment's throwing at them. The same thing's true when you realize that this little tiny piece right here, this little adjustment right here, is what gives them most of the direction ability. From where they, want, where they are to where they want to be depends on little adjustments to the rudder, not the whole adjustment. When I started to learn to fly, I was just dumbfounded at what these flaps can do to the aviation of the plane. Without these little trim tabs and these adjustments, and they're on all the ailerons and all the wings have these little tabs of adjustment. And when you need to, to get more performance, you just trim those, those wings, and then you get way, way more lift. So when you're coming in, you're going to land, you need a lot of lift, and you drop those down and put more curvature on those wings, and then all of a sudden that big monster can stay in the sky even at much slower speeds. So you literally, as a good captain of your ship, got to learn when to adjust and when to trim. And from little frequent steady repetitions of adjustments, you make these huge differences. It's so, I guess, probably the most profound period of my life and my career is when I've started to learn to draw. Because I lived my whole life thinking I couldn't draw. I had to trace everything. And the second I began to do a lot more regular, small segments of time, so I sketch during the news now. I like to watch the news every evening and I sit down with a pad and something to draw, and I sketch while they're rattling off all the bad news in the world. And that little repetitious, frequent effort has produced just tremendous results for me. And that's what I think we all need to be looking forward to, trying to figure out how to make that work. If you have a dream and you don't ever give up on that, no matter what, then you've got more chance of actually making it work, don't you? It's the part that really does make this whole thing work out well. It's a pattern that I think every adult kind of knows this 
this overview from defining what it is to making some kind of module to simulate it to deploying it to executing it to monitoring it to analyze it to optimize it and then the cycle continues are not those the steps but I don't think you can ever get to this point if you don't figure out first why in the hell you're doing it. This is the, the process of trying to improve your individual circumstances is the reason to work, I think. And when I see a, a brand like this one, they have turned, uh, they, all they got to do is think of some concept, some idea here, and it's an all-in-one step series for dummies and <laughs> as I was getting ready for this show I ran across this on Amazon and I went oh man alive uh, if you think of yourself as a dummy you automatically put yourself in such a tough circumstance why should you need the most elemental effort to worry about personal development isn't this something that you should really consider seriously and every morning when you wake up the goal of the day is to develop yourself somehow some way there's got to be when you go through and look at all of these words that are really the words of daily everyday self-improvement uh, how can this not be a better way to go at every day Creating, improving, working, perfect, new, choose, things, read, see, strive, positive, improve, constant, time, take, listen, today, begin changes and aspects best. Are not those the things that actually, uh, that's the things that motivate me. I don't know for sure how you feel about it, but that's the stuff that I thrive on. I typed in Google uh, Aim Your Life, and when it came up, I'm on the same page, front page, with my book and with Deepak Chopra. And if you look at these kinds of things and realize what's going on in the marketplace, what you print and publish now is what you put up. You bother to put this up then Google starts to reference it whenever anybody is coming back and looking at aiming your life. And man, I like that. I like being able to control that a little bit more. Notice the date, by the way, too. On June 16th of this year is when I posted that. And it's out there working for me now. And if you can do the same kind of thing with what your efforts are of realizing I want to learn how to influence people with this kind of stuff that we're doing. These kind of, of little sit-down visits of things that are really helpful and really influencing of other people's perspectives. Ron and I had such a good visit this week about the future of what he is building and what he has to share and the kinds of things he can offer to help other people is the lifetime of experience that he has basically built around him. Everything he has done has led him to now what he is now doing, and it's what he finds the most satisfaction in doing. But is that not true for you, Jay? And is that not true for you, Mel? And is that not true for you, Debbie? Every one of us have kind of gone on a journey and our life is a journey and there's nothing you can do about the past but whatever has happened in the past has brought you now to here and for me this is the this is the last chapter for all of us we're not kids and if we can put the icing on the cake and put together something that basically uh, a way to aim your life rather than not and I've played around with a passion prescription forever and to have those kinds of things that involved and what I like to do the most is try and show I basically preaching to me first and if another person gets to participate over here and find something that really really is inspirational and encouraging to them then we've lifted as we've gone so when you bother to post something on Google Plus, 
you don't know who's watching. There's 330 million people on Google Plus every day active. And when you bother to put a concept together and launch it out there, you have no idea whose life you're going to help at an individual moment. You do not have any control over what they're seeing or what they're thinking or how they're reacting. And I put it up and just let eternity take care of the matching of it. If Google is quite good at matching things, of finding people that can help with things that we need, can you imagine how good eternity is at that? At that? Does that seem so unreasonable anymore? It's like the answer to a prayer. When you've got the question, the teacher will show up. And I think, oh, that's powerful stuff. That means there isn't anything that you can't individually overcome. And how they've laid these out now, I love them. They're very, very attractive. It just kind of puts all of these thoughts and concepts into a position where if we can start to pay attention to them, our aspiration, our social abilities, our human capital, our potential, our awareness, our family, our personal improvements, knowledge, health, quality of lifestyle, practice, and skill, aren't these our hopes and dreams and goals? And does not wishful thinking help in the beginning stages of saying, what am I going to do now with the rest of my life? What's next? What can I accomplish and have put it into a position that will actually do some changing? Maybe tonight's the night. Maybe now is the time. Maybe now is the moment. And instead of going after everything from the old way, maybe there's a new way to go. Are you so old that you can't fire up a dream? Is it still just hit any key and then you take whatever whatever shows up? That one right there is where most people hover. They are in a deciding not to decide mode and things haven't worked out in the past, so I'm probably not it probably won't work out now. Or they're completely in the no mode. Last week I suggested that you try to figure out your next 10 moves. And this is a pretty old standard business managing practice that as you're using a business plan, you would have an idea of what those 10 moves ought to be. And you'd be out in front of your life and living at least that far, if not further. Wouldn't it help you to have a plan, a long-range plan of where you're headed, then just get up every morning and take whatever comes? So how much time did you put in on these 10 moves? What are the things that you think are most important? And then, for heaven's sakes, prioritize them. Know what the very next most important thing is. I'm going to launch some really big stuff tomorrow in my life. and <laughs> I had a hard time keeping my head in the game getting ready for this show this week because I could see it coming. And, and so many things I've worked on for such a long time are finally moving into position. It's like being on a big long journey in my big ship of dreams and I can see the lighthouse. I know where the port is now and all I got to do is safely guide it in the door. If you don't know what you want, you'll end up with a lot of that you don't want. Pretty upfront stuff, but it's a hard pill to swallow individually. <laughs> One way or another. I prefer picking out where I want to take the rest of my life. I have a terrible time with just random accident baloney. If you're here and you're trying to get here, it's not 
so much that you wander around at times or struggle at times or whatever, as long as you've got this pathway somewhat figured out. If this is the preference out of all these other choices, then you don't waste a lot of time trying to go after something you don't want to achieve anyway. Because the dream of going where you want to take it, to me, is so important. And there's just no question that the less you wander around and getting from where you are to where you want to be, uh, it's a whole lot better way to go at it. But I don't think that's very realistic in human engineering. We really do go through some messy steps and messy processes to achieve any degree of success. But right brain people have a singular fault. And we are all very definitely right brain people, and I'm probably the president of the club. You have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage, pleasantly smiling, unapologetically, to say no to other things. And the way to do that is by having a bigger yes burning inside. And isn't it appropriate that Mr. Covey is the one that coined that statement? The bigger burning inside. Something that helps you go to sleep at night and wakes you up in the morning is the dream of something you could pull off that you probably never realized you could even do. I could make a living just sandblasting that quote on those mugs or anything else. Live life to express, not to impress. Now, the smart thing would be is to rewrite this somehow in a, in a sentence that's my own and then put Lou Jensen right down there. Or maybe I ought to write it and I'll put Mel Joins on there and I'll blame it on him. But isn't this a great image? Isn't this a great photograph? Doesn't it sit in a circumstance that's just really clever? And is there not a way to take that same thought, that same look, and express it somehow with what you do. Couldn't that be done? And if you keep seeing this, then I lean into it even more. Every time I see, this is a trimming of the sails for me. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And there's stuff that you're putting into your digital journal. If you're not using that digital journal a lot, you're not putting these kinds of concepts and keeping them in one spot that will then influence your thinking. It's exactly what I'm talking about. It's huge. When you see someone else has done this graphic art and they start with thinking, analysis, planning, trying, doing, do again, keep on doing, uh, I've had that same thing on my own basis. I coined a, a look like this a long time ago. And I've also mixed into my own life this distraction issue because that is Lou Jensen's number one problem. I could get my brain so wound up and so wound up about a new idea or trying this or trying that. And every time I do, it interferes with getting other things done. Jack and I have had a lot of conversations about opportunity intersection and what it maybe means in the future and which way I'm trying to take it now and trying to go with it and groom it to the point that it actually takes hold and starts to do some good for right brain people because we all struggle with distraction. It is the main sale we've got to adjust. We're just going to have nothing but trouble as we try to optimize this and make things work out unless we literally can pull off a way to handle all those separate distractions. The miracle isn't that I finished, the miracle is that I had the courage to start. Now the courage I'm talking about tonight is to rethink your circumstances, rethink these ten things that are most important. Spend more time with that upfront dream where you're really trying to accomplish in the long run. And max that with the dream. Without the dream, the rest of this doesn't work very well. And this is the preparation stuff before the launch. 
if this isn't done really thorough or really well, you're going to have, from the moment you launch, you're going to have problems. And from then on, these are the three things you do to make the business succeed. You constantly check your directions, you're constantly trying to be creative in your problem solving, and then spend the rest of your life sharing everything that you've got with the world. I think this is a pretty steady plan, a pretty good way to kind of learn to trim your sails and make things work out. This is my ladder of success. A little dream produces a little bit of hope, and a little bit of hope and a dream produce some faith. And without these three, you're probably not likely to do any trying or doing. And if you try and do some things, you're going to get experience out of it every time, good or bad. And that experience should then lead to judgment. And this is a sequence that helps you then climb up to actual capacity. I can go through most people's circumstances pretty carefully right here and read the potential of their capacity because they usually give up right about here. This is the part that we just don't do enough. Uh, we don't try and do enough. We say, well, I can't write a book. I can engrave something that I don't think I can do. When you get to a point where you start beginning how and see how powerful it is, every time you try something new, you gain experience. And that experience then leads to better judgment. And that then leads to capacity. And right here is where you're rewarded. Not for all this other stuff. This is the investment you make first. The capacity comes later. And then the sharing part is <laughs> is the icing on the cake to me. Every time I mix with you guys and interact with you somehow and see the progress that we're all making as a network, developing our talents, discovering we have the talents, developing the talents, mastering those talents, and then sharing those talents with to make the world a better place. I'm getting better than that. I'm hoping that the business side of learning what to do with art is what we end up making a difference. I think the business training for most art programs is terribly deficient. They never have figured out that it's a want in the marketplace, not a need, and it makes a huge difference in your marketing efforts when you don't understand what's going on on how the motivation of spending your money in the top half of the economy is as opposed to how it is in the bottom half. So, begin with the end in mind. Try and keep that end in mind and your uppermost thinking as you go to bed every night, as you get up every day, you go after the day. Try and see if there isn't some way to creatively go after some things that you never dreamed that you could possibly pull off. Finding and learning how to use our talents and things accomplish something now between now and the time you're going to check out. Accomplish something you never thought you could. Take on something really, really huge. And then just don't give up. I am convinced that we all have more ability than we know. And as we open up those doors and turn the, turn the tiger loose, <laughs> there's just practically nothing more fun than that. Yeah, it does take time and energy. But the thinking has to be getting past our own ordinary thoughts. It is the new ideas that you come up with that will overturn and change and shift every gear in your life. So do not fear the playful time with new thinking and new ideas. Every one of our success stories have gone after mastering something specific and they're extremely good at helping other people. It's probably these are the treasures of my life, the relationships with people that have not so much the mixture, it's so much watching their own individual progress as they began to discover that they really had it in them. Darwin didn't know that he was as good as he is. Greg didn't know that he was as good as he is. Ron didn't know that he was as good as he was. Or is I, it's the same thing every time. We all start out going, hey, I'm just ordinary me. We're going, no, we're not. Not any of us. And the second you start lifting somebody else in the process, 
That's when things really start to be advantage. Uh, I use this in my <laughs> in my life many times, and I just wanted to end with that tonight so that you'll understand until the morale improves and the verbal flogging will continue. Watch Steve Lankard and his progress with his own individual efforts. I don't know of anybody that I admire more and that I enjoy more, and his abilities have just improved so dramatically these last few years. I've watched Steve Willie take on his circumstances and try and manage and move forward. He has got a really big dream, and those big dreams take time. They're a bit of a challenge, but what a great thing to motivate the rest of your life and the rest of your doing. And, of course, Lance. When you look at this here, you see the kind of activity that Lance is pulling in and mixing with his life and his efforts. Isn't it just the most enjoyable thing to realize, Lance, you have a tool now that helps you reach out into the world and help build your future that's better by far than any tool I've had in my whole 40 years. To be able to mix on the web like we can now and do it in such a way that Google helps you go find your future customers. That's just about as profound as it gets. And not only is it relatively easy to do, it's free. And when you see what Deb's doing with her exposure and her ability, she's got a ton of talent. And she's just getting basically more busy all the time. And what Deb's got to do now is focus it. She's got to zero in on the long-term reach of what she's trying to turn the Debbie Corman studio in. I've had very few members of the network have had as much overall exposure as Debbie has. And it's just a delight to have your mixture, Debbie, with your seasoning and your background, realize that she's going after all the decorative painters in this world, and there's 250,000 of them in this country huge, huge, huge database that could learn to do the kind of things that Debbie's now learned how to do. And she's extremely good at that. She just posted up, it's possible, said pride, it's risky, said experience, it's pointless, said reason, give it a try, whispered your heart. And how can it be any better than that? This is what Google is noticing, what Debbie posts. And what you post is kind of what you start to chew on, and what you chew on and swallow is what you then become. So whispers of the heart to me, Deb, there's a whole book in there. Give it a try, whispered the heart. Hey, there's a whole book right there, guys. And when you see that and realize that that's where you could do to help basically work towards your uniqueness a little bit more and shove it a little further than maybe you ever had, why not? Why not put that into place and see if you can't make that work? All right, troops. Let's, uh, let's visit about problems, things that make it hard to do what we were trying to talk about tonight. And I want to start out with you, Ron, first, because I think you're in a position right now where you're going after some really unique stuff. Okay. Can you see how adjusting how you've had to adjust your sales your whole life, you've had to adapt? Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, it, it's, you know, some people, maybe they can latch on to something and they go with it and it's with them their whole life, but with me circumstances just force me to to change every few years i mean i there's there's times i could have given up on any one thing and and didn't you know i maybe i had to take the concept or what i was doing and just put it in another direction but um i just i just kept on going i 
you know, if it, if it wasn't in one thing, it, it was it was in another. But you know, the last, oh, you know, I guess I would say since 2000, 2002, I kept heading in this one direction. But then it, it's you know, again circumstances hit, and I couldn't keep going on, and I had to change and say, okay, maybe I just got to take what I know and and learn how to share that and um, you just you never know but you got to keep your mind open as to what's gonna what's gonna happen you can't let it get you down uh, you you just gotta you gotta look at it and say okay this happened to me what's the worst that could happen now if I go in this direction and I've been going and how can I make things better for me and and maybe just shift a little bit yeah and that's what I had to do and don't you get a signal sense that you're going in the right direction this, you, you know what it, it's it seems like I guess it, it happened my whole life but all of a sudden you have these feelings and stuff keeps coming into your life you know it might be one day where all kinds of stuff just keeps keeps coming in from a whole bunch of different people, but it's the same thought, and it's like I got to pay attention to this. Isn't this is that amazing. for a reason. Yeah, that's me too. I just it's just like a reinforcement. You get a whisper, but that whisper comes at you from several different angles, and you're going, "Hey, wait a minute, dumbbell, pay attention." And I years ago when I had a job, job I. You, you weren't aware of that because it was too much other things, you know, fighting for your attention and, and, and too many negative things. Uh, and, um, but as I, you know, got older and I, I, I hopefully a little bit wiser, but I started to be more aware of, of what was going on around me and those little whispers and those little things that happen and say, ah, that's the second time today that happened. Yeah. Holy smoke! How many times did I see that word today? And yeah. it's like, okay, this means something. Time to pay attention. Yep. Does anybody else have the same kind of experiences? Because I'm kind of counting on the fact that that's kind of how is that how you're going at things now, Lance? Doesn't one good idea lead to another for you? It does, or it can also be one good contact leads to another, leads to another. You know, just one thing you did leads you with, uh, you know, with word of mouth leads you to the next thing that maybe you didn't expect you'd be doing. And then all of a sudden, uh, well, that's how some of the different changes in some of the carvings I do is just maybe one guy says this, and then the next guy who sees that says, could you do this a little different? And all of a sudden... That's that's how the one of my designs from my 1911s that's super popular uh, at Katana. That's how that started. It was just somebody asked a question about a sword a sword handle, and I went, hmm. Somebody asked another question. Before I knew it, there was a concept there. So you never know. Yeah, and I think it's so helpful to begin to discover that's a tool. That's a very worthwhile, usable tool for you to kind of go with. Have you had that same experience, Mel? Yeah, I kind of grew up as a service brat. So every couple of years we were moving and life was changing. Yeah. You leave friends, you had to make new friends, and you had to learn how to roll with punches, go with the flow, and see where life was heading. So what you've been through and experienced already is help guide you to become who you've become. Yeah. Yeah. You know how to survive. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I circled the word "adapt" and put it in the slide, now I was thinking of you. <laughs> I really was. You gotta you adapt are, to your circumstances. You are really a, an amazing person for your ability to adjust and make things work out. I just I admire you no end for that. You really, and you're almost an indomitable spirit. I don't think I've ever heard you say the words "I don't think I can do that." You're the kind of guy that 
You yeah, know, I'm kind of like, here, hold my coffee and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you yeah. mean I can't do it? Yeah, yeah I think that smell for <laughs> The Mel had a book of life, that would have to be the title of it. <laughs> oh, I can see that just perfectly now. How's things gone for you, Nick? Do you have a similar kind of, uh, do you see that in your life from your experience so far that you've kind of been guided a little? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, just where things have led me, you know, you were showing the the fact that I had stopped by your place yeah. on, on the trip. I mean, that's on the way from Rochester to Mesa. I <laughs> well, you and I know how far out of the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole damn day to swing over and get down to Vernal and stop by and see me, and I was so thrilled to have you come by. Yeah, it, it was, was a real fun trip. In that stage, too, at that period, it was so undone still that I could have quit pretty easily. But I had several of you show up in my life and constantly nudging house, the studio coming, Lou, and that that keeps you going, doesn't it? It does. I mean, we got having pretty, the support. We have a pretty amazing mixture going here in our circle. And as this grows and gets better, won't it do just even more of that? I think that's why I come play on Google Plus with us. I really do. I know that's working for you, Jay, isn't it? One step yeah. at a time. Yeah, just, I mean, just, just one step at a time. I mean, one conversation at a time. Um, it, just, it, it all kind of flows together on, you know, where you end up being. So, yeah. you know, some things I've had come into my life in the past week, you know, I'm still trying to sort some of them out, but, you know, that's part of life, you know. I'll get them sorted out and move on from there. Well, I, I would. I've never dared move into the individual problems very far. I generally, over a period of time, I get a little awareness of the individual struggles. Uh, but there's not a soul in this film strip tonight not wrestling with some really interesting challenges. Every every one of us and every human being and I look at the news and I see what some people are suffering with and struggling with, I just go, oh, God, thank Lord, it's not, I don't have to deal with the loss of a son. I don't have to deal with the, uh, my son gets beheaded in the Middle East. I mean, there's some really thorny, difficult, nasty things going on in this whole world. And those are the storms that really, really mangle your life. What I'm talking about is the day-to-day -day, day -day battle zone. It's When you listen to a kid, Jay, you get lots of younger kids that come to the Harley shows and stuff, and you get to visit with them. It doesn't take you very long to realize that they're pretty naive and they've got a lot to go through yet. <laughs> oh, so true, so true. <laughs> and even when you try and warn them about what's coming yet, they don't, they don't want to hear that stuff, do they? Oh, they're, they're too busy having fun, you know, yeah. and that's kind of the philosophy that I learned to use, you know, doing a lot of these bike rallies and stuff, you know. Yeah, it's nice to make the money. It's nice to, you know, to meet people and all that, but you've got to have fun with what you're doing. You've got to enjoy what you're doing, and for me, you know, going to, you know, bike rally, yeah, I may be living in a tent for three or four days or seven days or whatever and eating all kinds of dust, dirt and exhaust fumes and everything else but I enjoy the heck out of it I mean I walk around there the whole time with a smile on my face yeah I did too when I do in the car shows God, I just I'd get so cranked getting ready to take off and then I I got my t-shirt or my shirts that I wore uh, I had the yoke done embroidered across the back and I had put that on there having a good time is my job and from that moment on, in every public exposure I've had, when I'm wearing that shirt, I get the dangest reactions because most people aren't having nearly as much fun as I had <laughs> playing with what I was playing with. It's just an amazing, amazing playground. How's it been for you, Joni, over the years? Do you think you've guided 
been guided in a similar kind of a fashion. You've ended up turning your mic on, lady. We're still not hearing you yet. I like how you've got it set up and stuff. It kept we speaking away from got me. Roll top desks right there. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, it's just with me. It's it's a matter of uh, perseverance, trying to keep going. And treat, but I am learning so much just from you guys, just listening to you and 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 knowing you all on the on the computer and everything. It does. It has encouraged me. I know. I have a dream. Okay. <laughs> keep working towards it, but for some ungodly reason, I always have one thing after another, bam, 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 bam. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going. So, uh, I'll, I'll make it. I hope that's the story of everyone participating. And it's so fun, Joni, to watch your level of persistence, because you really struggled even to get on to the shows and make the computer work and all that stuff. But now, you can handle just about any curve that comes along because you just would not quit. You would not back off. And I think that's the difference. That's the difference between those who succeed and those who do. Millions of people try to learn to paint and do oil and paint, and they don't stay with it long enough to get good enough to where they ever enjoy it. Do you think, Joe? You know? That's true. That is very true. My biggest problem is it trying to decide which I enjoy the most. <laughs> <laughs> so my slide tonight about being diverted and constantly distracted is uh, kind of an issue for us, isn't it? Yep, it sure yeah. is. I can crank more ideas than I could do in five lifetimes. and Everybody teases me about it, but I don't know how to manage it. I still haven't learned. I it take me very long to get wound up about a new idea and a new concept. Dean, you got your mic on, buddy? Open your mic up, Dean Lind. You're there. I can see your face. You got in tonight. I don't know if he's got his microphone going. Rod, how about some words of wisdom from Kansas? Well, it was 98 degrees today, and I didn't uh, burn up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if it was that hot, then uh, then you must be able to survive no matter what. Does that mean you're rather adaptable soul, Ron? I'd rather uh, have the heat than the cold, but it's uh, it's been pretty warm this week. Yeah. Hey, Doc, Doc, I saw saw a tag today. It said on the back of it, "Have fun." Have fun. I took a picture. I'm going to send it to you. Okay, oh. dude. Post it, sucker. Put it up on the stream and let us all mix with it. That'll be fun. Okay. That'll be a lot of fun. When you've done certain moves in your life, Rod, and you've had certain things happen to you, oh, God. are you the kind that will keep coming back to your hopes and your dreams, or are you, you don't give up, do you? No, I uh, I gave up one time, and okay. it was a it was a mistake I made, and uh, I realized that you're not beat until you do give up. You keep getting yeah. knocked down, keep getting up, keep getting up, keep getting up. Yeah, I I couldn't that. I couldn't get in tonight for three times. I kept trying. I finally got in. I went and cleared my history, and I went in and finally got it whipped, and I made it in. Oh, here you are. I I think it's so interesting, the subtle little things that mess it up. And I don't know how to help people who who basically are pretty frustrated with it. They thought they had it worked out, and then it doesn't. But that's the experience of all of us. I mean, I would not have gotten through this two-year period without you guys all jumping in and staying with it, too. And yet we're getting stronger and stronger at having our sessions and having our gatherings. And I think as we start to develop your individual communities, the community side and the paid side of Google Plus is still the strongest part of this whole thing. And I'm trying to experiment with all the different stuff that I'm posting and putting up because not all of it is likely to work as well as I would like it to work. 
But what I'm really trying to do is figure out how it works so that we can then put one or communities, two or three or four or five underneath each of you. And then as you grow those, then we'll start working off of a page, a Google Plus page, and then start doing YouTube videos that then mean you're putting things up live. And I'm pretty sure live video production is going to outdo anything that anybody's doing on a, on a page or in a blog. And a printed blog is going to get left behind. You've got to be able to say and do and teach what you want to post in a live interactive format and that's coming I just don't think there's any question and we'll be right there playing should be a lot of fun should be really something exciting and worthwhile to work toward I've got a quick question shoot Ron does anybody know or have they, have they looked at uh, Facebook Spotify SPOT Spotify I've seen it but I haven't done anything with it anybody else Raise a hand, know anything about Spotify? There's so many coming up. Uh, is it an app? Well, what I understood is that you go in and it's uh, you put up a page and there, you'll be able to sell off of it. Okay. Well, we better go look at that then. I haven't. Uh, I just brought it up and just barely looked at it. But I spend most of my time playing with Opportunity Intersection now with everything's in place. I've got the books printed, I've got the DVDs up, they're over on the on the web so I can use them. Uh, but how to market it, how to use it, how to sell it is still now the really big big question mark and I'm spending most of my time playing with that and I that's how to me it's always worked. When I started to run ads in Better Homes and Gardens my Better Homes and Gardens ag was $8,700 a month. And I was, that was the most consistent, expensive advertising I'd ever done. And I was so nervous about it, really, really struggling because every new magazine we would start to try and work with as, a, as an exposure tool was different. The gun business was different than the knife business, and they were different than the motorcycle business, and they were different than uh, every every element of business we would tackle that was new and different presented an awful lot of challenge. And I think that's how life and living really, really is. It takes quite a lot of doing in individual areas to develop a mastery or a competency level to actually then make it turn and make it work for you. And, and if you don't have that inclination going into these new thoughts and these new efforts and these new things you're going to try, you will hit the brick wall and you'll probably drop off and not do any more with it. And to me, it's exactly what it takes to learn to sketch. It's exactly what it learn to engrave. Every time you pick up a new piece of wood, is not that wood a little different every time? And you have to kind of wade into what you're going to do and how you're going to make it look good. And if you've got a degree of experience and background, the odds are pretty high. It's going to turn out looking pretty nice. Same thing with every time you tackle a new project in, in the motorcycle world or in the custom engraving world, everything we take on is a little new and a little unique. I just, I'm moving a lot of stuff around that I've had packed and put away and in the museum. And I've got quite a lot of thank you gifts that have come into my life for individual people and uh, Judy sent me this one Judy and Lon, Lon's our airbrush master and Judy's learned to do the engraving and this was a thank you engraved on uh, the vase. Now the vase you could get these at Pier 1 and then she composed this on a stencil and then hand etched it on with a small diamond and rubbed silver acrylic in it and I've had it now Let's see if I got a date on here August 2006 she did sign it and date it now as you do more of these kinds of gifts for yourself every time you've got a thank you every time you've got a relationship you want to nudge think in terms of this forever letter kind of a concept and an idea as the world 
figures out that you can do this kind of thing and that it's hand done, it just has way more weight than if it was actually computerized. Now, sometimes I can sandblast it to make it a little more precise if it's something I'm doing for Jack Solomon or a wealthy patron, I'll usually compose it into a stand blasting stencil and I'll blast it on. But I've just got so much there that I've done over the years that I want to now do it again and record it on YouTube and post it up over on Creativity Zoo. The Creative Zoo to me is the place I want to try and help people begin to discover they're not trapped, they're not in a cage, every one of us have way more potential and we just haven't bothered to go go after it much at all. And so that process of trying to see if I can do these things and get these projects and get them posted before I check out, just huge for me, it's something I really, really am determined about getting accomplished. So each of you, as you're taking on these new challenges, these new thoughts, really pay attention to, as Covey said, don't get wrestled up and locked into the thick of thin things. Stick with the things, the bullet points, the ideas, the dreams, the things that are most profound for you. That, to me, is a signal from all eternity saying, hey, pay attention. This is what's really important. This is what you can now contribute from your wisdom, from your background, from your perspective, you can use custom engraving, artistic efforts. Uh, it is a way that you can grow and progress and then share and pay the bills along the way. Okay, everybody, I think we've covered it tonight. It's been fun to have you sit down and participate with us. Right on your bathroom mirror, I can adjust my sales. Figure out what next is most important and adjust the sales and let's get on with it. From now till December is a really productive period of time. This is the harvest for what you've made the effort the whole year to get to this harvest time is really important. So let's let's uh, ramp up and go after it together, shall we? Yeah, um, Lou, I don't know if yes, you know. Tommy. Um, my husband's a 500-ton master captain in the ocean, and yeah. day one that I've met him, we, that's most of the things that we were doing, sailing through all the Caribbean and everything, and on, on sometimes it was on sailboats, and sometimes it was on, you know, other kind of boats, but it, it what you're saying about adjusting your sails, I, I'm yeah. personally... You're, yeah, very familiar with that. But that's it's... Uh, it's a good, it really is a wonderful thought, you know. It's an amazing concept. It okay. really is. is yeah, the microphone? Go ahead. The navigating is what's, I think, important. If your life's in a stuck or stalled or in a spin, you've got to navigate out of it or through it or around it somehow. And that means adjusting the rudder and taking your bearings and keeping your head screwed on and adjust the sails. I didn't realize, I didn't think about that, Johnny, but that is, that's really appropriate from your perspective. Been years on the ocean. Oh, yeah. Anybody else got a thought? Well, is my microphone working? Yeah, yep. Nick. Yeah, you got it. This her. is the other microphone. So This is the new one? Well, so it's what, not exactly new, but it's new for my use here. What kind is it? Is it a professional? It's a road. A road? Um, it was got one it. that uh, is for video recording. Good. It's got and a good sound a, to it. Is it sounding good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's got a little more bass. Because it's, uh, I bought a converter. It's got a 3.5 millimeter plug, and I bought a, a unit that converts that to USB. Cool. So you just put it in a UPS plug or U USB plug and it's fired up, huh? Yes, although it's taken me a, a bit of time to figure out what the settings need to be for it to work. <laughs> well, if it took you some time, Nick, I would never have figured it out, my friend. <laughs> when I run into those kind of snags, I'm just all but helpless. I I probably could handle a root canal still, but I can't handle much that the computer world throws at me. I have to have somebody help me, Ace, about every time. 
Mel's usually you or Nick are the ones that are there to help me. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah, all right. Well, good night, everybody. We'll catch up with you tomorrow night. been good to have you sit in with us, and we'll look forward to taking on our ten next best things here in the next little while. I think we need to concentrate on what those next decisions ought to be for each of us. Catch you tomorrow night. Yeah.